And in just a second, I'm going to be introducing author Carrie Bovey, and we're going to be talking about her brand new book called Girl with a Gun, and it's all about Annie Oakley, and it is so good. And we use Zoom instead of Skype, so it's going to be a little bit different, but I loved it. It was like, it seemed really clear, the connection, so I was really happy about it. But anyway, Annie Oakley, I learned so much. I fell in love with her, and I... Wait till you see this. Wait till you see her. She is so cute. And we had such an amazing conversation. So everybody here is Carrie. Okay, now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am so excited because I'm speaking with author Carrie Bovey. And we are talking about her brand new book called Girl with a Gun. And I forgot to ask you if you had a copy right there. But if you don't, it's okay because I'll I put it up on the screen. Do. Yes, I have... Um... I have an advanced reader copy with me right now. All right. Yeah. Can you hold it up a little bit more? Because I want to see the cover. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's awesome. That's This book was so much fun. And I just got done with it, you know, like at the end this morning. And um, it was like, I didn't know what to expect. Like, I didn't know if it was going to be like a biography of Annie. Oakley and you know but you did some crazy things so I'm gonna let you tell me like what the you know how you wanted to go about this right well I um I love writing um mysteries and I love historical fiction and I had seen a PBS American Experience special on Annie Oakley and I I almost didn't continue watching it because I'd always considered her kind of like this goody two shoes um <laughs> Cartoonish type character, and I think it was because of the way that she's been portrayed. Um, and so, you know, with the with the plays and the movies and things like that. So um, I continued to watch it, and I was really impressed with her um, depth of character. She went through a lot as a child. She had a pretty tough childhood, but she could shoot, and um, she did really well. She like won shooting contests and things like that. And um, I just saw that she was smart, she was savvy, um, considering that she really had no formal education. She had really, you know, she lived in poverty. You know, her, her family was on really, had really hard times because her, when her father died. And right. um, she just kind of had a tremendous faith in herself and what she could do and I just thought she would make an awesome amateur sleuth because I, I, I like to write about, about, you know, real life people, but it's kind of tricky because you want to stick sort of close to the history. But I mean, you're talking about this character <laughs> as a sleuth, you know, as a detective and that's, that didn't really happen. So it was an interesting, um, it was an interesting exercise in trying to get into her head and trying to stay as true as I could to how she is portrayed and also kind of give her a little bit more savvy. Yeah, I I didn't know that much about her. I mean, yeah. I loved how much I learned. I mean, because you do, you stick with her like as the person. So it's like, it's there's a lot of um, truth to her, you know, especially her background. And, and I was like, how come I've seen so many of those plays? Like growing up, didn't you feel like you saw a lot of it's about her and like I was like I didn't really know that much about her but I was so impressed with how you wrote about her and then I went on Wikipedia and they actually have a video so everybody out there who wants to see this they have a video clip of her shooting yes that was done a little bit later in her career when when you know yeah. motion pictures were you know it was still probably <laughs> silent it you know silent film at that time although you do hear it you do hear yeah. So it might have been at the very beginning of the talkies. Um, but yeah, and you know, I do take a little bit of license with some of the history. Um, she did meet Frank Butler when she was 15. She actually yeah. beat him in a shooting contest. Yeah. And they didn't, they joined the Wild West show together when she was about 26. But interesting, she, um, she fudged her age a little bit because they brought on Lily Smith, who's in the story, and who was a little bit of a threat to her, um, you know, her fame and fortune. And so she said she was younger than she really was because Lily was like 15 or 10 years younger than she was. So it, it's just interesting how even 
you know, we play with history as writers of fiction sometimes, mm -hmm. but even they played with <laughs> own history, you know, they, they made things up and, and stuff like that. So it's really kind of an interesting, you can't ever be 100% accurate on the historical facts. And what intrigued me about her was trying to get into her head and seeing how she felt about things and how she approached mm -hmm. life. Right. And so, I, you know, I didn't like that Amazon put it under biography because I was like, that's not, that's not a fair, you it's know. It's biographical fiction. I know, but I know. some of the problem is, is sometimes people just see biographical and they don't right. see the fiction part. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. It was like, it's just more like historical fiction or by, I don't yeah. know. I, you know, that's how I looked at it. But I just wanted to tell everybody. So I didn't know, like, if Kimmy existed. Okay. She did not. She's a made-up character. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that until I got to the end, but I wanted to tell everybody because I love a great first line. And the first line is, Kimmy sat at the campfire waiting for the water to boil. And then you go on to talk about, you know, so you're like, hmm, what is going on? Like, and, and of course you started off with a bang. Okay. And Kim, you know, we find out what happens to Kimmy very early on. And, <laughs> and then the last line of that chapter is the light died. And I was like, oh, and I love that line because to me, that's the line as a reader that makes me go to the next chapter, you know, because yeah. a lot of readers, you know, we read that first chapter and we want to know like, what's this going to be about? And I just, I thought you did it brilliantly. I loved it. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's, it's, um, you want to kind of leave the reader with a little bit of a cliffhanger. Right. Go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, Oh, what ha Oh, I want to know what happened. And that's why when I got done with the book, I was like, oh, okay, so she, all right, so I get it. So that's how you brought her in and then all these other things that Annie does. And, you know, yeah. I loved it. I don't know. Like, I got to learn a lot about her, but I love the fact that you, you know, took liberty with her character and made her this, you know, badass. Can we say badass? <laughs> badass <laughs> yeah, right she was like to me it's like she was kind of an original badass you know she was. and I think in I think in true life she was she never considered herself uh you know better than anybody else or or whatever but she was playing games in a man's world and she was beating right. them and yes. that was that is really cool and to me that makes her a badass and that's yes. why I like you know she was so empowered and and I love writing about empowered women in history. And um, I think what made her so empowered was she was herself. She just, she was herself at a time when it was difficult for women to be themselves. They were supposed exactly. to be wives and mothers. And yeah. She was, she was herself. And that was cool to me. I know. And I love, you know, you, you go from, um, it starts in 1885 and then right at the end of 18, like, I don't know, you don't span a very large time period of her life because, and I don't want to give spoilers away, but anyway, she, like you said, she eventually marries Frank, but I read on Wikipedia. Did you read about like how he died? Yes. He died very soon after she did. <laughs> and they were truly, I mean, they were truly partners. He was her manager and, um, you know, they had a wonderful relationship. Yeah. They, they, and Wiki, I think they said something like he died of a broken heart, like 18 days after she died or something. I was yeah. like, and after reading it, you know, I was so emotional about the book because I just got, and then I went to do the research and I was like, oh, well, you know, it was kind of challenging because I had read that about her and them. And I'm like, wow, this is not going to be, I need to add a little bit more tension you know, to their relationship to make it, you know, just a, a better read, a more fun read. And so I had to, I had to create some conflict between them. So I thought, you know, in real life, he was not threatened by her talent. He was actually, that's one of the things that he fell in love with. Um, but I thought, you know, what if this big guy, you know, who's this you know, star of this show is a little threatened by this 15 year old girl who yeah. comes in and just becomes America's sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess she really was, huh? I mean, the show, like yeah. that show was, it went on to like, you know, traveling a long, I don't even know how long. I mean. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, they did, they did travel together for quite a while. They went over to Europe. Um, mm -hmm. I have a book that's going to be coming out next May. It's this, the sequel to this. 
And um, it's so this is a series. So it's the second book in the series. And this is when they go over to England to perform for the Queen's Jubilee, Queen Victoria's Jubilee. Which, so, yeah. <laughs> when I saw, I read that too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love Queen Victoria. And then I love, now I love her even more because she loved her. And uh, I can't wait to read it. You, you have to find me. I'll be an early reader. I will. And, I will. Okay. <laughs> I love because I loved your writing I was just you know I got so into the story and you know like I said I knowing so little about her but then when I, by the time I was done I like fell in love with her and not just because of what she did and you know you just made me really fall in love with her and well, that's awesome to hear I'm so excited because I fell in love with her as I was writing her you know yeah it's like there was so much to work with there you know she just was oh such gosh, a funky, yeah. awesome woman yeah, I know. And then to see like pictures of her older and she, okay, I'm five foot. So when I read that she was five foot, I was like, oh my gosh. And she's little like me. Like she, <laughs> and she did all these, you know, she's such a talented woman. I think she picked up a gun at like age eight or something and was like a good shot from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. She, it was just a natural talent that she had. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy to hear. I didn't even know that there was a next one. So I'm so happy to hear that. What number of book is this for you? Um, gosh, I've written, I think I have four or five that are completed. This one is the third. And so I, you know, I've got some others. I've got a couple of other series that I want to launch um, in the future here. But this particular one, I've written the second one. It's coming out in May. And then I've also written a prequel novella to this novel, it's, um, you know, 20,000 words, and it is about, you know, Annie Oakley's life before she got this break, and um, she had a very difficult, as I said, a difficult yes. childhood, and so it kind of goes into that, and that will be coming out in September. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. I love the, pre I don't know, you know, as readers, we love that. We love, like, the prequel, and then and, you know, like, I don't know. And it's a full story. I mean, there's a lot to write about her. So I'm really happy that that's, that you're doing that. How long have you been writing? I've been writing for forever, it seems. Um, <laughs> I, I did a lot of writing when I was growing up. You know, one of my very favorite gifts as a child was a typewriter. And so, at, you know, 10, 11, I was writing stories. I did a lot of poetry, short stories, things like that got into college and um, tried every major under the sun until a professor pulled me aside. He was actually my academic counselor. And he's like, look, you're an English major. You're, you know, you just need to face it and own up to it and embrace it. And um, so that really kind of started me on the path. And then when I got out of college, I got a job as a technical writer. And, you know, it was a little bit soul sucking because I was used to the right. creative writing. And, right. Um, so I did a lot of that kind of writing. Um, and then when I had my children, I wanted to stay at home with them. And mm -hmm. um, I needed some kind of an intellectual outlet. So I started, I wrote my first novel. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was, you know, and that one's under the bed and it's never coming out. <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, it, it really got me started. And I loved the book length form. I just... It was so exciting to me. So I took a lot of craft classes, you know, I did a lot of, went to a lot of workshops and things like that and just really worked on my craft. And so I, you know, I've been doing it as long as I can remember. Wow. Let me um, show everybody the cover again. Did you get to decide the cover then? Well, yes. How they did it was. Um, oh, I love that. Asked, I'm like getting close to it. Like I can get close to it. Yeah. Like the. Um, I know, love it. Discovery sheet. And you tell them all about, you know, the book and, and the things that you kind of want to express in the book. And then you send a bunch of images or ideas. You, they asked mm -hmm. me to pick out book covers that I really liked of other authors. And I, they wanted me to do like 15 or 20. I was like, I don't know oh. how I'm going to do this, but I did. And um, or any other graphics that I thought would, would be a part of the, the book. And um, they came up with this and I, they gave me five different choices I think that was for the first one five different choices and this was the second one that came up and when I saw this one I started crying I was like yeah. that's it they get it they get the book it's like it was awesome yeah yeah, yeah the like sepia you know from yes. like oh, I love that I love yeah. it so it's fun because 
you get to be part of the whole process, which is so, um, it, it's so gratifying as an author to be, you know, you get choice, you get the choice. Yeah, yeah. I know. And that's what I love about that whole, like, vision that she had of helping other women and making them really a part of what they were doing, you know? So I love that. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. And I really, I cannot wait till the next one. I mean, I just, I'm so, feel so blessed. I spent like a whole day with her and now I feel so attached to her. So I can't wait to read the next one. Oh, good. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. And thanks for this opportunity. This has been fun. Yeah, it really has been. So everybody, they will see the cover. I'm going to be giving away a copy of this book on Instagram. So I'm going to have all of Carrie's links listed underneath here, but then I'm also going to have the link to the Instagram so you can win a copy and, you know, I can't wait to share it with everybody. Great. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you and we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And thank you for watching. Wasn't she so cute? I love her and I cannot wait for her next book to come out. And uh, we have to wait a little bit, I think till May, she said. But anyway, go get it. The link is listed down below. I'm going to be giving away a copy on Instagram. And I just want to thank her and thank you guys all for watching.